David, this week we are in something that really does make me feel special. You mean my clothes? No, no. Special er than that, it is the Lexus LC500 convertible. Let's take you on a tour of the Lexus LC500. Let's mm. start with the price. David, deliver me the bad news. $214,000 plus uh, on-road costs and other What things. do you reckon the on-roads would be, 20 grand? Uh, at least, I think we're talking quarter of a million. Right, we start with the engine, which is an absolute belter, a belter of a V8. Non-turboed, five litre, beautiful sounding car. 351 kilowatts and 500 Newton, 540 40. Newton metres of torque. And, and it had the world's first 10 speed automatic. Oh yeah. Love the front, very wide, but it has flowing creases that aren't just straight down the bonnet, leading to the typical slightly over the top Lexus grille. Lights on the side, perhaps a reflecting, not LED, Alan? Yes, they're LED. And then down below is the indicator. As you can see, we've got that flashing. And the vent beside it, David, directs air around there. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up out and across the wheels. But the bronze of this, it comes in several colours. This bronzy colour is incredibly sparkly. Also comes in this beautiful blue with interesting uh, upholstery options. And also white and uh, a metallic green. As we come along the side of the convertible, you can see the lines converge and diverge out over the beautiful rear end and up and down over the sort of almost boat tail rear end. As you can see down the side, it has a very strong skirt and that feeds into a grille that works, I think, for airflow to the back of the vehicle. That's a very important point. And beautiful twin exhaust pipes. <laughs> and these 3D effect tail lights. That's an odd place for the indicator. The front was the same. I like the boomerang effect here, very elegant. I go to the middle, but then I come back in order to find the boot release. It's the tiniest button in the world opening to a not overly huge boot. A lot of space has been lost in the storage for the roof itself, but at least there is a boot. Uh, 21 inch wheels, Alan, how do they go over potholes? Well, let me tell you with the absolutely awful weather we've been having, the, this thing crashes over potholes appallingly. Sounds like the back of the car's falling off. And first there was one on the freeway, here it is. Ah. And next one going into the Royal National Park where I've been doing some extensive driving. One, oh. it didn't look that deep, but it took a chunk out of the wheel. Then we move over the front. This whole section here is what uh, hides the roof. And from this, David, deploys a, a bar, a rollover bar. And there's a little piece of fixed glass which allegedly provides some kind of wind uh, protection, but I'm here to tell you it doesn't work. The interior, I'm gonna point this inside. I'm not even gonna try and fit in there. There's enough room. You can see that there's a computer bag there <laughs> taking up nearly the whole seat. There's no leg room. This is the rear of the vent for the neck warmer. But look at the inside, that, that leather work is just absolutely divine. If I move my phone, this bit slides back to provide uh, possibly a cup holder and a trinket tray. And then inside, some USBs, an auxiliary input, and your 12 volt input. Very, very important if you want to run a dash cam as I am. Also in this area are the switches for the roof and the universal close and open for the windows. Very important the 10 speed gear selector, hold and the park button and the Lexus, what do we call that, command centre. Uh, the, the screen sadly isn't a touch screen, but we've got a row of buttons for the air conditioning. There's a park digital screen over here. All of the cruise control buttons have been put up here onto the steering wheel. The lights and wipers are fully automatic and over here is the control for accessing the menu. All right, 
as you would normally say, pilot to bombardier. Listen to this. Yeah, baby. Should I give it a rev? Oh, geez. When I started this, the steering wheel came forward and down to meet me. My seat slid forward. One important measure is that everything that's in this car is in it. You don't have to pay any more money for it. <laughs> Unlike some brands, which are now renting you things like heated seats. Oh, and that's just in normal mode. I've got sports modes. Oh God, that just sounds magnificent. Doesn't that sound fabulous, David? Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm just going to put it into normal mode because, of course, this also has active suspension, which means uh, the more you dial up the sport, the less you dial down your comfort, which is not always desirable. We've got electric seats with memory position that also remembers all the other stuff as well. So it remembers your uh, mirror position and so forth. Oh, that's good. Yes, and also it's got double dipping mirrors. So when you put it into reverse, you can program that amount of dip that you'd like. I've got the climate concierge set just so. Uh, it's at 27 actually, because believe it or not, it's a relatively cool day. The car is turning things on and off, the seat heating, seat cooling. So if you turn it down, it'll go from heat to cool, which is a bit disconcerting. It'll also heat my steering wheel. Do you like a heated steering wheel, David? No. Now, going around these tight bends in now in what is normal mode, there is absolutely plenty. I can dial it up here with these LFA-style buttons on the side of the driver's binnacle. It's made the suspension a little bit tougher, but not so much around this corner. I feel like I could take this car to a track, but you know what? I don't think this is a track car. This is a gentleman's tourer. And of course, this has really sophisticated suspension with multi-links and multi-links at the back. Okay. I love touring at this speed gently through here with the roof down. Oh, absolutely it's... wonderful. I've been driving all week, as I said, with the windows down, and it makes such a difference to the experience. Mm -hmm. It feels, you feel like you're part of the environment. And I think that's the thing that people that have never driven a convertible or never been in a convertible miss. They go, why would you want it? Why would you want a convertible? Well, you'd want a convertible because you can do this. And with the windows down, it was all very well while I didn't have to talk. But when you do have to talk, I think it's a windows up thing. I can feel now the car's turned my seat heating on. Are your seat heating on as well? Well, I'm getting a warm feeling oh. down there. I hope it's a seat. Well, have you wet yourself? I'm going to switch to our Apple CarPlay. That's brought up the route to the place that we're going to. And it is wired, unlike some brands, where it's wireless, although BMW is now going to charge a subscription for that. That seems to be a very important point to you, Alan. It's, it's made me angry. We've now got the roof up, and as you may have eagerly observed David's driving, <laughs> David, it's much quieter, much, much quieter with the, um, with the roof up. It's four layers. Hmm. There's an acoustic layer, an outer layer, this pretty inner layer, and an extra layer just for good measure. The other good thing about this too, and you're a classic car lover, all of those old convertibles that you've driven, David, what was the one thing that you dreaded in this kind of weather? A rain. You, and, and they leaked like sieves. And leak, yes. And no matter how careful you were to close the roof and latch it properly, they still leaked. You may, in some cases, not have bothered having the roof down. You'd probably be drier. Well, this roof will still work at, uh, I think, at speeds of up to 30-odd kilometres an hour. I don't think I'd want to risk that, though. I slow right down. I was doing 110 or so, and I'm only in eighth gear. 
Yeah. So I've got two more to go, which I can manually bring up. But in terms of fuel economy, I'm not going to get the advantage of those extra gears unless I work at it. But you'd started to run down the hill by then, it would have started to reduce it. Okay, let me... Oh. Ah, see now... What are, you, what are you trying to do? I tried to get back to drive. You really can't work this, can you? No. But of course I ended up in neutral and I can't get into drive until I put my foot on the brake to go into drive. It, when it's still? When no, the no. car's still? No, no, as you roll. No, 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 no. Look, that won't go no. in. It won't. No, no, no. Well, I beg your pardon. Cut that out. So that's manual. Mm. That's drive. Not surprisingly, David, it's user error. <laughs> David, this is a car I want to be buried in. I love it. Mm. And unlike some people, I don't think there is much else in the, this section of the market that can compare. A non-turbo, beautiful V8 with heaps of power. I, I love its response. I love its sound. And I love the fact that with the roof up, it's relatively quiet. David, it's come time to hit like or leave a comment, but above all, over there to subscribe. <laughs>